Hello and welcome to this click. Some of the deadliest clashes have been seen in Kashmir yesterday after 11 militants were killed in three separate encounters carried out by the army. After these uh, militants were killed, many protests emerged in the two districts where the killings happened, that is the districts of Anantnag and Shopian. So to discuss these uh, developments and to discuss the other incidents that have been happening in Kashmir in the past few days, we have with us today Gautam Nablakha, who is a civil rights activist. So Gautam, firstly, talking about the clashes that have occurred yesterday. So we saw that we're seeing these, this uh, huge support towards the militants from the, from the civilians in Kashmir. After these people were killed, a lot of civilians came out to protect, to sort of shield the, uh, the militants in the areas where these encounters were happening. So what is this, uh, uh, this atmosphere we're seeing in Kashmir today? Well, as far as the three encounters that you talked about, this is the f first time and since 2010-11, I think, if I, my memory serves me right, that uh, there have been such a mass casualty suffered by militants in a single day. Hmm. So that by itself is a very significant uh, loss for the, for, the, for the militants. But the more interesting part of it is, as you pointed out, is despite Operation All Out, hmm. despite the threats and warnings issued by the armed forces, the army, the police, the CRPF, and the authorities at various times, people still come out and gather at encounter site mm. shouting slogans mm. uh, in support of the militants exhorting them and uh, uh, doing everything to to uh, lend support to them and enabling them to also escape this phenomena mm. which began we start, i mean this began around 2013 14 and picked up after Burhan Muzaffarwani's uh, killing in 2016 July, uh, which has since picked up, mm. and it sh shows no sign of abating. Mm. And it's in that context, if you look at the civilian casualties suffered yesterday in these encounters, mm. it's pretty large. So more than 200 people. Uh, uh, went to the hospital with injuries, a lot of them with bullet mm. and a uh, lot others with pellet injuries mm. and a very large number ag once again uh, with injuries, uh, uh, pellet injuries in their eyes. Right. And mm. it's this which, which also deserves to be taken note of that yes, militants suffered a major mm. loss in a single day, mm. losing 11 of them. And by the way, they are all local youth. So the death of local people, the fact that civilians come out and continue to come out in such large numbers, uh, I think it's 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 uh, it's it's uh, it's a warning for the Indian government that the policy of military suppression is not going to work. Yes. Since this operation all out began, uh, they've suffered a lot. Civilian killings have been on the increase. This year alone. Uh, roughly, I think about 16, 17 civilians have so far died mm. in these uh, various uh, encounters. And it's just been three months. Uh, in just three months. Um, and uh, they, if you compare it with the number of uh, militants who have died, as well as the security force personnel who have died, it's pretty significant. And also, it's not like the militant numbers are going down. We're seeing a surge in the number exactly. of... Exactly. So the... the, the the, the, the message also of civilians turning up at encounter sites is also that despite the fact that the militants get killed mm -hmm. in encounters in large numbers, uh, there is no dearth of recruits mm -hmm. to militancy. So at this level, this militancy can persist for a very long period. They don't require because it's the civilian support which is acting as a force multi multiplier for them. So that is, I think, a lesson that we should uh, heed, uh, not the lesson that is being made out. I mean, people coming out and the army officers and all uh, making this boastful claim that, well, we have dealt a major blow to the militancy mm -hmm. and we'll soon uh, bring it to an end or bring them to their knees, etc., etc. I think one should be more careful about mm -hmm. declaring victory because there is very little uh, that shows that it's 
shows any sign of abating any any time very soon. So the second major development in the state is the lifting of the house arrest of uh, Syed Ali Shah Gilani. Along with him, the other uh, other leaders of the joint resistance leadership, Mirwez, Mirwez Farooq as well as Yasin Malik, have also been given permission to uh, carry out the social activities and political activities. So, uh, what sort of impact do you think this will have? Well, I think that the timing is pretty uh, uh, unfortunate for government of India. Because if they had believed that by releasing the three leaders, the you know the three that comprise the joint leadership, uh, Sayyid Ali Shah Gilani, Mirwai Zoma Farooq, as well as Yasin Malik of mm -hmm. JKLF, that they might be able to uh, that, that it, they were trying to send the message that well, things are in their control. Mm -hmm. Actually, what it shows is that they were compelled to release them. Mm -hmm because this policy of confining them to house arrest or mm. arrest, mm. Uh, ensuring that they don't come out in public, they don't hold rallies, they don't uh, deliver speeches, etc., etc., would somehow bring uh, the movement to an end. Mm. I think that has been belied. Mm. Uh, on the contrary, what has happened is the militancy picked up. Because when you close all other avenues, you're, there are curbs on your freedoms and, and crackdown uh, on all kind of protests and all, then you leave people with no choice mm. but to end up not just owning the militants, but also extending support to them, as we have seen in the case of them turning up in large numbers at encounter sites. And with Amarnath Yatra now due in June, mm. the annual Amarnath Yatra, um, I think they had no choice but to release them, mm. to see whether it could bring the temperature down, so to say, in Kashmir. Uh, well, it, we, it, it remains to be seen whether it actually results in that, because they had also been, they have also been warned mm. that while they have been released, uh, they should not cause any law and order problem and not. Uh, uh, you know, give in to any anti-national uh, speeches and things like that, which is ridiculous because going by the parameters and the, you know, uh, the set up by the BJP government, every statement itself can be considered uh, as anti-national because any criticism of armed forces or of repression, of killings of civilians, hmm. uh, lack of uh, of uh, bringing the perpetrators to justice etc anything can be you know construed as uh, as amounting to anti national statement because it's directed against armed forces of india etc etc mm -hmm. so i think it's it's pretty but if they thought that by releasing them they would be able to release pressure and bring the temperature down and maybe there would be a decline in civilian support for militancy. I think it's too early mm. to say that. Also, Dineshwar Sharma, I mean, he recently went on a visit to Thral, I think, and not, I mean, we're not seeing much resulting from his visit. Well, Thral, it's, it was reported by most of the Indian newspapers as though he went to the lion's den and was managed to meet people. Actually, the reality was altogether different. Mm. He entered an area where everything was shut down, mm. there was heavy deployment of security forces and uh, the usual uh, suspects came to meet him. Mm. Uh, nothing worthwhile came of it. So, I mean, his, his, his role, I mean, in any case, Government of India has declared on the floor of Parliament that he was not meant to talk to anybody mm. but to the representatives of people, which means those elected representatives. But those elected representatives have no quarrel with India. I mean, they still want, they are part of India. Mm. They declare their allegiance to Indian constitution. They have no problem with it. The problem is with those who are, who are questioning mm. accession to India who are talking about Azadi or the right of self-determination. You have to reach out to them and talk to them. Mm. And there it's been a miserable failure. Mm. Uh, so lastly, moving on to the situation in Jammu. I think we're seeing a, uh, this shift 
in uh, people's attitude towards BJP. Uh, even after the Kathua case, where BJP was supporting the these uh, locals who wanted the case uh, shifted to CBI. Mm. Now, even these people seem to have sort of turned against BJP. Like we saw, the BJP's uh, committee meeting was shifted from Kathua. So, what can you tell us about that? Well, for too long, we have ignored developments in Jammu and one has treated uh, uh, whatever was, was happening in Jammu and Kashmir. I mean, it was focused on Kashmir as though it's unrelated, that whatever happens in Jammu does not impact or contribute to deterioration of, 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 the, of the situation and conditions in Kashmir. Mm -hmm. Now it's become evident that actually one can't talk about Kashmir without also simultaneously talking about Jammu, which is in the midst mm -hmm. of a deliberate attempt to create a communal polarization, mm -hmm. including encourage elements which speak of ethnic cleansing, mm -hmm. getting rid of Muslims from, uh, from uh, uh, the, the Hindu dominated areas and uh, even the muscular talk about Pakistan and teaching Pakistan a lesson and all uh, which swayed a lot of people who stayed uh, stay close to the line of control or the international border mm. with Pakistan. We, we are now seeing that uh, signs of people actually being frustrated with, mm. uh, with BJP because they had expected something to change, to mm. transform, uh, peace to return to, to an area where the fields are so that they can carry on feed, you know, tilling their land and uh, take care of the livelihood, school mm. education, etc. of their children, mm. uh, uninterrupted by shelling and artillery exchange of, you know, uh, a fire between Indian and Pakistani troops. It's the opposite that has happened. Things have become worse. Mm from firing bullets, now they are firing heavy artil artillery guns against each other, yes. causing uh, far greater damage than one had expected. So there is a sense of frustration with BJP. The frustration is also amongst those hardened Hindutva elements who feel that the BJP is not backing them mm. uh, in their Hindutva yeah. project. Uh, so, this decision to move the state executive meeting, as you pointed out, from Kathua to Suchedgarh, mm. I think that was, they, they realized that if they had held it in Kathua and if protest had taken place while the state executive meeting was going on, would have sent a wrong message mm. uh, to their own constituency. Having, having created this communal monster, now they find that... Uh, it's uh, it's no it's d demanding a pound of flesh which they are not in a position to deliver yeah. they can't deliver on 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 uh, on the demand for ethnic cleansing for instance of kathua and other districts where the hindus are in large majority they can't deliver on a peace peaceful uh, line of control and 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 international border now shara uh, for instance has been having an of more than 40 day long agitation that go, went on there because they had promised okay. that Noshera would be declared a new uh, a new district mm. but they were unable to do anything about it in the last three, three and a half years. And of course the resentment is also coming from as we've seen this new pa uh, parliamentary committee report which shows that only 22% of the mm. 80,000 crore package that was assigned for GNK has been spent. Uh, yes. Uh, although I must also add at the same time that BJP's or uh, Prime Minister Naren Modi's famous economic package is not the only package that has suffered. Mm. Almost all packages announced by, by successive Prime Ministers in the last 30 years have all mm. failed to deliver on the promise. But it's, it is true that BJP's performance has been miserable. I mean, to be able to only release in the last three years 22% of the funds out of 80,000 promise, promised, I mean, it shows uh, that they were not even serious mm. about 
what they declared. If you remember, two years back when Mufti Saab was still al alive, mm -hmm. at a public meeting after Mufti Mohammed Sayed had spoken and urged Prime Minister to, to reopen dialogue, resume dialogues with Pakistan and hold talks with Hurriyat and others, mm -hmm. he had turned around and, and snubbed Mufti Saab by saying that he did not need anybody's advice on Kashmir. Mm -hmm. But it seems this government and its prime minister actually needs a lot more advice and it's high time they start paying heed to advice of people who know what the situation is on the ground. And this make-believe world that you can, through military suppression, bring situation under control, showing that it's not going to be like that. When people are against, people are disenchanted and frustrated and there is no political resolution in sight, there is a no way you can bring either militancy or this movement uh, to its knee. It's impossible. So uh, thank you, Gautam, for joining us in this discussion. And uh, thank you for watching this clip.